Hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. My name is Peter Waters and my ham radio call sign is Golf 3 Oscar Julian Victor. If you're a newcomer to ham radio and uh, you've looked and watched and heard what's happening on the HF bands, you can't fail to be impressed with some of the conditions that occur um, from day to day on the higher bands, particularly on the uh, 15, uh, 12 and 10 metre bands. And uh, when these bands are open, they're open worldwide. And the good thing about um, those particular bands is that they are not too demanding on the power that you run or the antennas that you have. For most days there's an opening on these, uh, these bands uh, from time to time and uh, sometimes there's some really big openings. But, as always, uh, for many of us it's a problem with antennas. And, uh, it was again, if you're a newcomer, you probably think, well, what antenna do I put up? Where do I put it? Uh, I've got a mast, um, I've got a tree down the garden, etc, etc. But some of us don't even have trees, and some of us don't even have gardens. So, there is always some alternative that's worth considering. And one of the alternatives is to consider installing an antenna, an HF antenna, in the attic, or the loft as we call them in the UK. And many houses have got lofts, uh, whether it's a house or a bungalow. Um, there are some restrictions um, that um, may preclude that, um, particularly if it's rented property and so forth. But if you've got a uh, loft or an attic and you can get into it, then it's worth considering putting an antenna in the attic. Now you may, f may think, well, wait a minute, is an HF antenna really going to work in the attic? Well, the answer is yes, it will. Um, radio signals travel through slates and tiles and other roofing material. Um, if you've got a metal roof, which is probably unlikely for many of us, then you will have a problem. It won't work. But provided that you've got a conventional roof, uh, the chances are it will work. Now, I've no idea whether solar panels impede the uh, signal that much. Um, that is something I've got no experience of. But <clears throat> um, like all things, it's worth trying. And the good thing about uh, uh, an antenna in the roof space is that it's not very demanding. Um, you don't have to make it structurally very strong. You've got plenty of material up there to support the antenna on. Most of it is likely to be wood, and wood, particularly dry wood, is a very good uh, insulator. So it's very easy to install an antenna. Now, probably it's worth making a test first of all, if you can, just to see whether or not it'll work. And what I suggest that you could do is you install a dipole uh, in the loft temporarily, just run a bit of coax from that dipole, perhaps with the loft hatch open, to your receiver or transceiver, and just to check out uh, whether it will work. So let me, let me just sketch on a piece of paper here what you need to do to try and see whether the attic is a go or no-go place for your HF antenna. So let's draw the basic dipole that you would use to check out whether an antenna in the attic or loft is going to work. In length of coax cable, I suggest you start with, or I suggest in fact you use RG58. It's a thin cable, it's more than adequate for the short cable run that you're going to use, even at 10 metres. <clears throat> the top here is uh, got the centre conductor and the outer sheathing. The bottom bit here will go to your transceiver or uh, receiver. Dipole is basically the length of wire which is cut in two pieces. So you have one piece there, one piece there. One side goes to the outer sheathing, the other side goes to the inner conductor. So that bit or well, that bit can, can be connected to the outer sheathing, the other one is to the centre conductor. The length of the dipole for resonance depends on the frequency and I've put up here three bands and these are good starting points. I've given you measurements for 10 metres, 15 metres and 20 metres. You can decide which band you want. Obviously the lower the band um, the uh, longer the antenna. So choose the length of wire that will fit into your loft 
Don't be frightened to bend the ends around a bit if uh, it needs, if you need to, to get the antenna in the loft. Uh, try and put this feed point as high as you can. If you can put it right up on the apex of the, of the, of the roof, or under the apex of the roof, that's fine, because you'll get the, the highest point there. And because that, that area there is where maximum radiation occurs. So um, try and get that as high as possible. And that will allow you then to check whether the antenna um, will work for you. And uh, I, should, I suggest you give it uh, a week or so to uh, see whether it works. Obviously in the winter you don't want the loft hatch open all the time, so you'll have to decide <laughs> how you can work that one out. Anyway, it will enable you to check whether the antenna will work or not. Now if you find that uh, it works for you, then you could simply drill a hole in the ceiling, run a bit of coax through that hole and down to your transceiver. And the hole is only um, required to be the diameter of the coax and you'll probably use some thinner coax like RG58 or something like that. And uh, that hole can easily be filled in at a later date. So there's structurally no real problem there. But it always seems a shame, doesn't it, that you've only got one band, because a dipole basically is a single band antenna. There's, there's one exception, but um, basically a dipole is a single band antenna. Well, there is another alternative, and it's an alternative that I used myself about 20 years ago when I moved into a new house. I hadn't got a mast in the garden. There was one tree which wasn't in a very good position, but I wanted to get on the air. I installed an antenna in the roof space. But I used a doublet. Now let me just sketch on a piece of paper what a doublet is. If you're a newcomer, you may not know what a doublet is. Basically, it's a dipole, but uh, it's fed not with coax cable, but what we call balance line or balance feeder. So let me first of all just sketch on a piece of paper what a doublet is. Making a doublet is actually very simple. You need the balance line, and we represent balance line by drawing a couple of parallel lines like that, and spaces there. And balance line, we would normally, use, normally recommend 450 on balance line because it's tough, it's light, and it's cheap. And then we create our dipole, like that. Now, the good thing about a doublet is that it doesn't actually have to be resonant. In other words, that line there, that element there, is not critical. So you can adjust that to fit your loft. I would suggest that for the average loft, you could try 24 foot, um, which is around about, what, seven and a half metres, seven or eight metres, as a good starting point and that should enable you to operate on five bands 20 meters 17 meters 15 meters 12 meters and 10 meters because the property of a doublet or the advantage of a doublet is that it is not actually fussy what bands it operates on the only requirement is that length there that element there should be in the area of a half wave, it doesn't matter if it's a bit shorter, as it will be if you use uh, eight meters of wire, but provided that that is roughly a half wave or getting on towards a half wave, then it will work on the band, um, the lowest band, which in this case will be 20 meters, because 20 meters will actually need 10 meters of wire. So we put eight meters of wire in there, which will fit in um, probably uh, many lofts, and then run this 450 ohm ladder line down and that ladder line needs to go into a balanced connection which we'll come to um, now. Now as you've seen the doublet uses balanced line feeder. Because it's balanced you can't connect it directly to your transceiver because your transceiver has got an unbalanced line and it expects to see 50 ohm coax cable. Well, there, is, there are two ways around this, and the simplest, simplest and the cheapest way is to actually install a short coax line from your transceiver to 
a ballon. Now I would suggest a four to one ballon. A one to one ballon will, will work, but I tend to favour a four to one ballon. You have just that short coax line connected from your transceiver antenna socket to the ballon. And then on the other side of the ballon, you can connect your balance line. The problem is, and it is a it may be a problem on some bands, but not others. The problem is that in order for that system to work, you must have, an ant uh, must have a, a transceiver that's got a built-in antenna tuner. Now, most modern uh, HF transceivers have built-in antenna tuners. The reason that you have to have a tuner is because balance line um, on its own doesn't present a very good match and the, the match that it presents varies from band to band so you, it does need some help provided that your antenna tuner in the transceiver will match it then you'll get a very very good transfer of power and it's almost as good well it's basically as good as coax cables in fact it's sometimes a little bit better but anyway we're talking about short runs of cable so basically a balanced line is as effective as a length of coax cable provided you have the ballon between the uh, balance line and the transceiver. Now the antenna tuner in a modern transceiver has certain limitations. It can match certain antennas, it can match certain reactances and so forth. It's a bit of an unknown quantity. It's one of these sort of try and see. Now if you use the internal antenna tuner um, in the transceiver you may find that in some bands it won't match because the internal antenna tuner of your radio has got certain limitations. If that's the case, and it is likely to be the case in some bands, then you will have to invest in an external antenna tuner. Now that's not a bad thing because an external antenna tuner is a great investment. They're not fashionable items. Once you've got an, an external antenna tuner, uh, it should suffice for many, many years. So you may have to go for that. But let me just show you on a sheet of paper now the configuration that you will need for feeding this five bands antenna in the attic stroke loft. It's pretty simple, really. You simply replace your ballon with a an antenna tuner so we've got the transceiver here and that then feeds into the ATU which is a matching unit that ATU then feeds your balance line now it's important that when you purchase an ATU you make sure that it has got a balanced um, connection. Most ATUs have they're designed to accept wire coax and balance line so you want one that has balance line and when you use that antenna tuner unit you must remember to switch off your internal antenna tuner in the transceiver if you have that on you're going to have all sorts of sort of weirdo problems so make sure that you turn that antenna tuner off and simply rely on the external antenna tuner and that external antenna tuner should match the antenna on all the bands in other words in this particular case the five bands 20 17 15 12 and 10 meters now passing 450 ohm ladder line through the ceiling is very simple you take the ladder line from the antenna to the point at which you want to go through into the room below. You cut the ladder line there, leaving a little bit of extra for leeway. You bear it back like that and you pass the two points through the ceiling. You need a couple of holes in the ceiling about the probably no more than two millimeter diameter hole. Just push it through the ceiling there and uh, then you have electrical um, joining block um, on the other side of the ceiling, in other words in, in the room at the top of the ceiling and join likewise a similar bit of uh, 450 ohm ladder line to that chocolate block and then take the rest back to your transceiver or to your antenna matching unit. It's that simple. Now as regards efficiency of this antenna, it can be pretty good. In many locations it's highly likely that if you run that wire along the ridge of the roof, which is the highest point or the apex, it's the highest point, you'll probably get it higher than you would in some gardens because 
you're likely to have a height of around about 25 feet, maybe even 30 feet in some cases. And that really can be a challenge in many gardens to install a mast that height. So it is worth trying and it can be very, very successful. And it does circumnavigate any planning um, regulations that are in, uh, in force and it will enable you to enjoy these excellent band conditions that we've got on these higher bands. And these conditions are going to last for three or four years. So it's well worth giving it a try. So see how you get on with it. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. I was very impressed with the one I put in my uh, attic or loft um, 20 years ago. It worked very well indeed. And uh, it's, uh, it's worth a try. Now, don't forget, of course, if you increase the length of the wire, then you probably can operate on a lower band as well. So, for example, if you put um, 40 feet of wire in the loft, you would certainly be able to operate on the 10 megahertz band, and you may well achieve resonance on the 40 meter band, which would be great, wouldn't it? Anyway, give it a try. So I hope this, uh, uh, this video has been informative to you. It's worth um, investigating this possibility because uh, it can work and it can work very well. And it can get some of you on the air that would otherwise not be able to enjoy these wonderful conditions. So there we are. Give it a try. Take care. Thanks for your support on this video channel. It's much appreciated. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.